But I want to talk about this old trick that USCIS, there's a bunch of old tricks in their bag, all right? But here's the deal, especially people who have been waiting a long time since, you know, maybe you filed the marriage case back in 2022 or earlier before that, and then you want to file an expat request, maybe a red hat interview. You want to make sure that you and your spouse, you know, assuming it's a spouse case, are still on the same page about your immigration case. Now, of course, everyone that I've talked to is in a legitimate, what we call in immigration terms, bona fide marriage. So you would think there's no issue. But for some reason, when people call us back and say, John or Ting Law Group, yeah, we're not in good terms anymore. And we just happen to get an RFE. Or we just happened to get a notice of intent denied. Or the USCIS officer just visited my house, my apartment. What do I do? Because your case is taking a long time doesn't mean that the fraud department of USCIS is on top of your case. But you just want to be ready. Like, I think you would know if you have a decent idea if your case is a little bit skeptical. But, and I hate to say this, but USCIS tends to scrutinize cases of those who are, I don't want to say the entire continent, but at least of Nigerian nationals, okay? And it's sad for me to even say that out loud, but it's true. We get a lot of calls, a lot of consultations, and they've trusted us to help them get through their situation. We really appreciate it, but a lot of Nigerian nationals tends to get a little pushback. I don't want to say a little, a lot of pushback from USCIS, sometimes for similar reasons. So if you're in a situation where, not here trying to give you relationship advice, but if you're in a situation where you're considering to get married and you have, of course, have not filed a case at all, you really want to get something straight. Number one is your financial evidence. You want to have a joint bank account, at least just one. And if your spouse, whether it's the foreign national immigrant or the um, the uh, U.S. citizen, and they don't want to join an account, that spouse is probably not for you, okay? Because this is one of the main evidence that you need to file with your USCIS case. So if you don't have that from the get-go, you're starting you're starting from like negative negative zero, probably like negative a hundred if this is a game. And this is not a game. This is serious. All right, your legal status is in potential jeopardy, or maybe you overstayed. So. It's in worse, could be in a worse situation. You do not want a situation where USCS denies your case and you have a finding of marriage fraud. Or even if they don't use those words, marriage fraud, but they say, look, there's not enough, like you don't have a preponder, you don't have evidence that satisfies a, our standard preponderance of evidence, which I hate to say this, but it's important that you know this. The standard of preponder of evidence is the lowest standard that USCIS applies to a case. So if you don't have sufficient evidence for it, for your marriage, for example, you need to start looking in the mirror. I'm very serious about this because some people just like not showing like, oh yeah, I found my own case or I've hired a lawyer, but you know, we not try to step on any attorney's toes or even your uncle Bob helped you. But we look at, we ask, well, what did you file with your case? And they say, uh, for evidence, it's a marriage certificate. Is there anything else? Because marriage certificate is the obvious one. Okay. But you got to provide way more than that. Not saying that it has to be a huge stack here, but if the government, and it's not just, you know, I put it out there, Nig nationals in Nigeria, but it's not just national Nigeria, but nationals of any country, if they see limited evidence, okay, and especially no joint bank account, but let's say you do have a joint bank account, and we've asked people in a strategy session, well, how many transactions is it per month on average? And you would have a pretty good idea without looking. I would say if it's less than 10, that's a little skeptical, okay? I would probably be a bad USCS officer or for immigrants. On the flip side, for the government, I think I'd be a pretty good one in that sense. Because if it's less than 10, I don't want to say it's not a legit marriage, but then that's definitely not the main bank account that you use or the checking account. At the end of the day, you and your spouse need to trust each other. And if you can't do that on documents like that, then imagine what USCI is thinking. USCIS, okay? So if you think you can overload them with photos from just like two events, your wedding day, and then like, I don't know, barbecue, and you think that's enough, that's not going to cut it, okay? So I'm here to share share these red flags, and USCIS officers are really paying attention. So I say old trick, but really, it's something they've always done. The other thing about the trick that I did want to share with you is the, the notices, okay? All right, the notices. So if you have what you want to do to rectify the situation is make sure 
that you have an online account. So when you file your case, well, let me share the problem first. When USCIS sends a receipt notice or sends an RFE or sends a notice of intent deny, and you're like, how come my attorney didn't know about it? It's likely it's because they literally did not know about it. Likely that the USCIS did not send it to them. Did not mail it to them. It's happened to us about a handful of times, maybe like two times. And so the client, of course, inherently is going to be frustrated. Like, how come you're my attorney? You didn't know. But as soon as that's why we tell our, our clients, as soon as we receive something, it's going to be in a Dropbox folder that's already shared with you. And we're going to email it to you. Typically, we call you the same day. Okay, we try our best to do that because we need, we need the evidence so we can move on to the next step, right? So it's in our interest to contact you as soon as possible. But uh, in general, even if attorneys do receive it, the law firm, typically, Typically, applicants, the foreign national, would receive it one day before. I'm not sure why. But anyway, there's a handful of t attorneys that we've spoken to a couple of times with our office. They haven't received the RFE, the NOID, or even receipt notice around the same time as you. So with that being said, we call that teamwork with the with our client. We ask people, if you haven't heard from us then about this, then you let us know. And anyway, there's a deadline. With the RFE or NOID, there's a deadline. You need to get going. All right. You need to file a suit. You need to file, get with the attorney, schedule a meeting with us, for example, which we have a link at the end of the bottom of our email signature. Only it's only for clients. All right. Because we want to provide as much guidance as possible, especially when it's, you sign up with our max or pro plan. And you, if you sign up with our light plan, for example, and you get the, some kind of letter like this, then you're always welcome to upgrade. Right. We have three service plans, but that's the trick that USCIS has been doing is that they haven't been notifying uh, the attorneys. And it's, it's strange. I mean, is it on purpose? You would think it's not on purpose, but you know, they, they claim that, oh, you didn't like, you didn't get it. Like there's no online system for attorneys to get on the case. Like we literally still have to mail in our representation form. It's super frustrating because they do allow online change of address for the applicant that we help with. So it's really strange. <laughs>